Hello and welcome. This is Pre-Union U College. This lesson is intended to provide information about thinking skills and how to solve these questions through strategical steps. These logical explanations and solutions will be, will be beneficial. However, please be advised it does not give all the answers to solving the thinking skills questions. Most importantly, consistent study and reading are essential for successful results. Pre-Union U College has always taught strategies and tips to students on how to approach questions, and this lesson is intended to guide and benefit you. This lesson and guideline about thinking skills is not intended as a shortcut to understand thinking skills, but students must study consistently to achieve successful results. Let's begin this lesson. So welcome everyone to part two of one, the second lesson of problem solving strategy for thinking skills. In this part, we will be going through different types of problem solving questions that you may encounter. We will also be learning about some tips to solve these problem solving questions. There are three types of problem solving questions in thinking skills. They are finding procedures, identifying similarity and relevant selections. We will be covering finding procedures in this lesson. So what are finding procedure questions? Finding procedure questions are questions in which students need to find a method or procedure to solve the question. These questions rely on students' knowledge in a variety of mathematical concepts and processes, as well as their skill in using these different methods. If we break down each word of the question category, finding is the action of discovering, locating and detecting. And procedures is a series of actions conducted in a certain order or manner in order to solve the question. Essentially, we need to look for an appropriate procedure using relevant information for the question, which is a form of critical thinking, and then use our understanding of mathematical operations. So finding procedure questions typically use the following mathematical concepts in which students should have a strong grasp of. They should know and understand mixed number operations, number concepts, simple number operations, table and graph, and verbal data processing. In this particular lesson, we will be covering the last two, which is table and graph and verbal data processing. So firstly, we will be looking at a table and graph type of question. A table and graph question will require students to process information given through a table or graph and be able to answer questions related to it. Consider the following example. The table shows the favourite subjects of students in Year 5 at Pre-Union U College. How many less girls favour novel study than the total amount of students that favour mathematical reasoning? So in this case, as you can see, we are given information through a table and we have to try and answer it, answer the question using the information provided in the table. So to solve this question, make sure to accurately fill the table with relevant information. Then analyze the data and relate it back to the question. And lastly, figure out what the procedure is to be used to solve this question. Firstly, let's determine the number of girls who actually studied novel study. So there are 96 people in total, so that means 96 minus 52, we get 44 girls altogether. To find out the number of people who, the number of girls who study novel study, we can do 44 minus 9 minus 11 minus 19, which results in five girls who favor study, who favor novel study. We also have to determine the total number of students who favour mathematical reasoning. To do this, we need to first fill in the first row of the table. The number of boys who favour thinking skills is 30, which is the total, minus 19, which is equal to 11. The number of boys who favour mathematical reasoning is 52, minus 13, minus 11, minus 8, and we get 20 boys who favor mathematical reasoning. And from that, we can get the total number of people who favored mathematical reasoning, and that is 20 plus nine, which is equal to 29. So how many less 
Girls favor novel study than total no- amount of students that favor mathematical reasoning. We do 29 minus 5, which is equal to 24. Moving on, a verbal data processing question requires students to understand complex information and determine what procedure should be used to solve it. To solve it, consider the following example. James, Julia, Jim and John are in a race. Julia finishes before John, but slower than James by five seconds. Jim came second. Who came first? To solve this question, make sure you understand the information. Then analyze the information and the question, then figure out what procedure should be used to solve the question. We firstly know that Julia finishes before John, so we can just list it out like this. We also know that Jim came second, so we can put it here. And we know the relationship between James and Julia is that Julia finishes five seconds slower than James. So that tells us that James has to be first because Jim is second, Julia is faster than John. So that means John is last and Jim is first and James is first. When looking at problem solving questions, this is a general approach that can be used to solve questions. Let's look at how we would apply these tips to finding procedure questions. The first step is to read the question. If you misunderstand or misinterpret the question, your solution may be incorrect. The second tip is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. In problem solving questions, many pieces of information will be provided and all related. Therefore, a thorough understanding of the question is necessary. The third step is to identify and process which pieces of information are needed to solve the question. In many questions, much more information than needed is given and provided. So identifying which of the following information is not necessary is important. The fourth step is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. Presenting information in different ways helps to recognize patterns and gain further insight. And finally, the last step is to solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. Use the necessary mathematical concepts and processes that you know to find the solution. Let's have a look at this table and graphs question from the selective sample thinking skills exam. 12 students are studying mathematics. They take three tests, each marked out of 10, out of 100. The results of the first two tests are shown below. We have a number of people, their results for test one and their results for test two. A prize is awarded to the student with the highest combined total score from the three tests. If two students are tied at the high, for the highest score, nobody gets the prize. As the scores currently stand, one student is able to be sure to win this prize as long as a high enough score is achieved in the final test. What is the minimum score in the final test that will guarantee this student the prize? This question falls in the finding procedures question category as this question requires students to use their calculation skills and find a procedure using mathematical operators to solve the question. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking, what is the minimum score in the final test that will guarantee the student the prize we are solving to find out the minimum score needed to guarantee the prize. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided to us, we can see and understand that 12 students' mathematics scores for test one and test two are given, a prize is given to the student with the highest combined score of the three tests, and that if two students are tied for the highest score, no prize is given. And step three is to identify and process which pieces of information is needed. From this question, there are three key pieces of information. Key information one is that one student is able to be sure to win the prize as long as a high enough score is achieved in the final test. 
Key information two is that we need to find the highest combined total score. And key information three is that we need to find the minimum score in test three to guarantee this student the prize. Step four is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. In this question, the data has, has already been presented in a clear method by using a table. It is now a matter of correctly using, representing and extending this data to solve the question. Step five is where we solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. We have now found and identified a procedure in order to solve the question. It is now a matter of applying the appropriate number concepts. Firstly, we need to find the total combined score of test one and test two and find out who out of the 12 students is coming first and second currently. We have added an extra column here and we notice that James with a total score of 169 is in first place currently and Layla with a total score of 160 is in second place currently from the first two tests. Then we need to predict the highest score Lay Layla, who is currently in second place, can achieve. Her highest possible score that she can achieve for test three is 100 which would give her a combined score of 260 from all the three tests. Afterwards, we need to figure out the minimum combined total score that James can have, who is currently in first place, to in order for him to continue placing first. We see that the minimum combined total score that James would need is 261 because they can't be tied. So James needs to at least get 261 total score to get the prize. This means that he needs to achieve at least 93 in the third test, in test three, because 83 plus 92 plus 86, 169 plus 92 will equal to 261. So therefore, option A is the correct answer. Now let's look at this example of a verbal data processing question from the Opportunity Class Sample Thinking Skills exam. Alex, Ben and Carlos all keep pets. Alex has snakes, fish, lizards, rats and frogs. Ben keeps cats, frogs and rats. Carlos keeps fish, parrots, rats, grasshoppers and frogs. Which pet does Alex keep that neither Ben nor Carlos keeps? This question falls in the finding procedure question category, as this question requires students to use their calculation skills and find a procedure using mathematical operators to solve the question. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us, which pets does Alex keep that neither Ben nor Carlos keep, We are to this tells us that we are to determine the pets Alex has that Ben nor Carlos has. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can see and understand that all three boys keep pets and that pets Alex and the pets Alex and Carlos and Ben have. We can understand the pets that they have. Step three is to identify and process which pieces of information is needed. From this question, there are three key pieces of information. Number one is that Alex keeps snakes, fish, lizards, rats, and frogs. Key information two is that Ben keeps cats, frogs, and rats. And key information three is Carlos keeps fish, parrots, rats, grasshoppers, and frogs. Step four is to analyze the data and represent it in different ways. In this question, the information can be placed into a table. We use a cross to indicate which animals we know for certain each person keeps. For example, A represents Alex, who keeps snakes, fish, lizards, rats, and frogs. B represents Ben, who keeps frogs, cats, and frogs, cats, and rats. And C represents Carlos, who keeps fish, rats, frogs, parrots, and grasshopper. Step five is where we solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes. We have now found and identified a procedure in order to solve the question. It is now a matter of applying the appropriate number concepts and 
finding the answer. From this information, we notice that Alex keeps snakes and lizards, which Ben and Carlos do not keep. Now let's look at this example of another verbal data processing question from the Opportunity Class Sample Thinking Skills exam. There are six towns, A, B, C, D, E and F in a region. Town B is north of town C and northeast of town A. Town C is north of town D and west of town E. Town F is east of town E. Which town is northwest of town D? This question falls in the finding procedures question category, as this question requires students to find a procedure to process the information accurately to answer the question. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us which town is northwest of town D, we have to determine the location of the town in terms of town D. Step two is to understand the problem that needs to be solved. Looking at the information provided in the question, we can see and understand that there are six towns all relative to each other in a certain direction. Next is to identify which pieces of information is needed from this question. There are several pieces of information that we need to use to solve this question. That is, town B is north of town C, Town B is northeast of town A, town C is north of town D, town C is west of town E, and town F is east of town E. Step 4 is to analyse the data and represent it in different ways. In this question, the information can be placed into a diagram as shown. We have that town B is north of town C, it's also northeast of town A. Town C is northeast of is north of town D town C is west of town E and town F is east of town E and that's how we get this following diagram step 5 is where we solve the question using the appropriate number concepts and processes from the diagram we created in the previous step it can be seen that town A is northwest of town D Thank you for watching this lesson and hopefully it, was, it has helped you understand a bit about problem solving in thinking skills and the strategies on how to solve these questions. Please note as stated in the start of the lesson, studying and reading consistently are essential for successful outcomes.